Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, what's happened here then? Been some sort of road traffic accident? Some vandalism going on in England? No, I've been changing this device, which is the control unit for the Xenon lights. Now, last episode, I changed the light itself, D2S, and the igniter unit, and that worked for a couple of days, and then it all fizzled out again. This time, it's the control unit that's failed. Now, usually changing control unit means t completely taking off the bumper and removing the light. Well, this routine means you don't have to completely remove the bumper at all. It gives you enough room by just removing half of it, and that keeps it safe from, well, putting it down on the ground is the worst thing you can do. It. It's going to scratch it up. So what we're going to do is go through the whole procedure of how to change this control unit. It, all it does is fit underneath the light assembly. So we have a light assembly here and it fits up underneath. Now it can't be done with the light unit in place because there's a beam that goes across so you can't drop it down. So the headlamp unit has to come out. And to get it out, you have to remove or well, loosen part of the bumper. So that's what I've done. Instead of following the technical information system that says you remove the full bumper, I've been having a go at it to see if I can remo partially remove the bumper and that keeps all of that safe rather than it sitting on the ground and getting twisted and disconnecting all the pipes for the high pressure headlight washers and stuff like that. It would be much easier just to loosen it off and that allow me to get the light out. So yeah, that's what I've done. I have recorded it, but um, recording wasn't the greatest. So what we'll do is we'll go through all the steps that you need to get this blooming thing out, which is quite a lot of travel just for control unit. Now, this was all a bit confusing, to be honest, because the technical information system said this didn't exist. The circuit diagrams didn't show this at all, but real OEM did. And uh, yeah, so real, real OEM showed me the correct part number for this part. And cheap, yeah, 25 quid, crazy. But the TIS, yeah, no, it didn't help me at all. So yeah, got the part number. I'll put all the part numbers, all the links up in the description so you can get these parts and the xenon bulb and the igniter and all the rest of it. And we'll go through the whole thing. Rightio, let's get on with it. Right, this is where we start. There's a number of fixings that attach the wheel well liner to the bumper. Start with three MH ones. There's one here, one here, and one there. Don't have to remove any of the other fixings of the wheel well liner. And then the last one is an M10, which is up here, and it goes up at a bit of a strange angle. After that, we can peel back the wheel liner just enough to get her arm up in there. And there's two M8s, one which goes up here, one which goes up there. They're awkward to get to and you have to peel it back and get your arm up in there. So what I'd suggest is getting a torch, peeling it back and having a good look up there to get a good idea where they are. That looks like an eight up there. Let's give that a go. Yeah, that's an eight. That seems to be the one that holds the bumper in place. Right. Certainly feels like there's one further up. So let's have another look. No, he meant to get to that one. Oh yeah, I can see he's further up there. Bit of an awkward one to get to. There we go, that's out. Ah, that's good. That's what we're after. Right, try and get you in there so you can see what's going on. Got the lights on. Can't see a great deal apart from cobwebs. But this is where the two bolts are. I might get a better view of that later on when the sun's not right in my eyes. But yeah, there's two bolt holes up there and uh, and you can see where they go through the bumper here. Got one here, that was an 8mm, that was an 8mm self-tapper. 
So now we've got the bumper quite loose there. Is there any access under the light? No, not enough yet. Probably get my hand up there. But yeah, we need to move on and take some more stuff off. Um, so yeah, they're awkward, but they're not too bad. So once you've removed one, two, three, four, five, six, then the bumper's loose at this position here, and then we move round to the front of the car. Right, on the front of the car, there's a M20 Torx fitting behind the fog light cover, just a single one. So pop this off, M20, remove that. Next one is under here. Um, this pushes to the right, as we're looking at it here, and then pulls off. Right, here's our next area, which is the fog light. So we need a trim tool. Can do it with a screwdriver, but you can have the possibility of damaging something. Well, yeah, that's off. There's a fitting there, which is a Torx. That has to come out. And then one's under here, so I'll get a Torx for that. Right, next thing to remove is this. There's a couple of fittings underneath. Very important, don't apply force outwards on it until it's gone across and then slip the up, put the top side of it out, otherwise you'll scratch this area. So get your hand in underneath. That's it, right, so that's gone to the side. Now keep that in position, pull the top over, and then you're not gonna scratch the... Let's go a bit further out by the it. That's it and then you haven't scratched this area. It will scratch the top area, but uh, you keep, at least you can't see it. Now in the technical information system and other YouTube videos I've seen, it says to remove three blind rivets which are around the brake duct. But on the E63 and E64, the brake duct, even though it goes right into the wheel well, is in two sections. And this front section is quite short, and it will just pull out of the second section. And when you put the bumper back on, the brake duct will re refit itself to the back part of the brake duct. So even though when I did this job, I removed all three rivets, I found out later there's absolutely no need to do it. So once we've done that, those two there, then we do exactly the same on the other side because we need in enough room to pull the whole bumper out. So after doing that, we move on to the fittings at the top. Right, here's the next fittings. Uh, they attach the bumper to the top of the car and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. We undo six of them just to leave this one in its position, remove all the rest of them. Now I left this one in so that the whole bumper didn't detach and that worked fine. We get enough movement to get the bumper out of the way for the light. Now, even if we completely remove the bumper, it's still a bit awkward getting the light out because there's a lot of other stuff in there, but we can get the bumper out far enough so we can get just the same amount of access as we would as if we remove the whole of the bumper. Of course. T30, not T35. Bring you in there. Right, let's have a look. So if the bumper's down a little way, and uh, yeah, the headlight's here, and you can just see underneath the light. Yeah, there, there, there it is. That's the control unit, the one that the tiz say doesn't exist. 
Okay, so I'm gonna have a quick practice and then I'll bring you back in. Once we have all the fittings out and the bumper can be moved far enough out to get to the headlight, then all we need to do is remove the four fittings which hold the headlight in place. There's one here, one here, one underneath here, and the last one is an adjuster. So it's uh, again, it's an M8 uh, self-tapping, but it goes into an adjusting unit and the plan is keep hold of the adjuster and undo the M8. Uh, because if you don't, then it will adjust itself and you take a bit of time getting the headlight back into the right place again. And as the headlight comes out, then we've got the main connector, which I can see just down here. You won't be able to see it at all. I've tried video in that before and you can't see it. And also the connector to the halo. Um, so just two looms to disconnect as it comes out. Um, of course, and while we do it, we also protect this area of the bumper with cloths so we don't scratch anything. So we've got that, which is an eight, T25, T25, T25. The only thing I can get in there is the half inch extension. So that's what I'm gonna to have to use. I think that's gonna be a bit of a pig to put back in again, to be honest. But in for a penny and for a pound and all the rest of it. Or at least it's not tight, that's good. If that drops out, it's going to end up, well, it's going to end up where my T35 bit ended up, which is in the fog light cavity, probably. I wonder if I can get my hand in here at all. Something rattled, that's not a good thing. I can feel the screw just can't really get hold of it. it might be a screw. Oh, that is. No, I can't get hold of it as far as I can feel. That's the end of the thing. That's the end of the T25. Ah. Right. So I put a cloth over the bumper. Don't want to damage that. There we go. T25 out and a few cobwebs. Go for the one under here next. There it goes, it is. Right, so it's quite doable with the bumper still half on. Might have been easier with it completely off, but I'm quite happy to keep it on, to be honest make it a lot darn sight easier to realign it and that's another t25 out one at the top here let's go in there i should think i have to lift the bumper back up again yeah that's a bit pig awkward go in at an angle i think that's in Righty-ho. You see everything there I'm doing? Yeah, I think so. Well, the headlight's starting to droop out. So it might be an idea to undo that back one first. Okay, so he, he is an adjuster, but if you hold on to it as you undo it, it's not going to adjust anything. This ten, uh, eight mil is going into a plastic assembly which can rotate, and rotating it changes the adjustment of the headlight in the housing. So as long as you keep hold of it and don't allow it to turn, then it's going to stay the same. I'll bring you around so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go, nice and close up there. That's the adjuster. The eight mil is screwed into it. If this turns, it adjusts this position. 
So we want to keep hold of that while we remove that fixing. So all the time you're unscrewing that, keep a hold of that. Right, headlamp's drooping about now. So get that back in. Oh no, we go in there and under there. And that should be it out. Right, headlamp is loose. That's good, like it protects things as it comes out. That's if it does come out, of course. It might not come out with the bumper still like this. It does though, that's good. Here you can see the halo bulb, which is an LED type. It has a loom on it. Zoom in there, that's it. it has a loom on it and uh, that's how they come from Amazon. They've got a loom and it just connects to the old loom. And then down here, that big block there, so get your finger in that one there, that's the main connector at the back of the light. It has a little top and bottom have catches and you squash them together and then it'll come out. Okay, so that's the only two connections you need to worry about, that big back one and the halo connection. That's all you need to disconnect to get the light out. Righty ho. What I want to do is see what's holding this in position now. Probably a lot of looms, I should think. Yeah, we've got the loom to the halo. That can, it's an inline connector for that, so that can come out. Or the halo can come out, I don't mind which. the halo and we've got a big loom quite sure what hold on to there right okay that's good you're gonna be much too close there righty ho that's the headlamp unit just held on by its main loom connector which is It's a big connector, I tell you that. Right, there we go. Light out. And there's the ballast unit or the igniter, whatever it is. Seems strange you'd have a ballast and another ballast, which we've already changed, but there you go. That's the one. Righty ho, let's see how this comes off then. Wow, into a connector. Right, let's hope it, that's what I've got in my Amazon bag then. Control module, 25 quid. Yeah, pretty similar. Okay, yeah. Unboxing video included. Don't litter. Oh, that wind's nice though. Just what I need on the back. Is that it? Sort of aligns. <laughs> so that just connects in. That's marvellous, isn't it? So it does a lot of functions. That's captive. Press those in, it will disappear down, so I won't do that. And connects like that not very firmly right well I think we've reached the point where everything starts going back together again glad I didn't have to take that bumper off the problem with getting thick big things like that off is that it, you do have the possibility of scratching it and I hate scratching bits of my car I really do right t25 wrong And there we go, that's back on, could give that a clean up, couldn't I, while it's out. But I think what I'll do first is plug it in and see if it works. Yeah, 
Yes. Oh, I'm so pleased about that. I really am. I'm doing all these up loosely because they're, they're designed to adjust. Um, you can adjust the position of the light by quite an amount. So what I'm going to do is going to check its relationship to the other side and make sure I get it back in the right place. Right, then when you do this side up and bring it round. Yeah, keep hold of the adjuster, make sure it doesn't turn. You can't see any adjustment for forwards and backwards. It can move it up and down quite a bit. Yeah, that's pretty much fixed that one. That isn't an adjuster in there. Let's have another look. No, that just fixes directly to sheet metal. So there's no adjustment. Right, long device in here. Get it up in the right position. Tighten this one up, I think. So let's get him up. That's well, too much force on that. About there. And then next one will be the one at the bottom, which is really difficult to get to. Right, there we go. Right, I'm going to have to get my hand in there somehow. Righty ho, here's the plan. Blue tack. So even if I miss it, don't come off. Try again. Right, well that is tricky. I couldn't do it with the cloth. <laughs> there wasn't enough room with the cloth still on. That's ridiculous. Right. I'll get my blue tech off now. Done its job. That's going in. There we go. And we've still got the bit on. Right, check for alignment next. Right, I'm starting to reassemble the car. This is the adjuster, as I said. So you grab hold of the adjuster. It has got flats on it, so you can put a spanner on it. As I say, the trick is not to let it turn when you take it off and then it's going to end up in exactly the same position it started in. But of course you've got up-down adjustment on this as well, so just loosen it off and I'll just show you what I mean. Right, a bit quite loose. You can see the whole headlight can go up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it so it's pressed up against that. So I've now got to hold on to the adjuster and the light, keep it in the upward position. There we go. There we go. These tighten in position. We've already done the big Torx ones. One here, one under there, one at the back there. So the headlight is now firmly in position. Looms are reconnected. So it's really now just a case of trying to get it all back together. 
so it looks more or less the same as it did when we started so let's try that you know, let's see if we can get this back exactly where it came from looking about right already right the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get the bumper in the correct position all round before doing up any other bolts and this is the important bit getting this up into position exactly the right position because this will make sure that everything else is in correct position so there's two bolts that go through here from underneath right well that's taken about 99 attempts I've got the bolt in position at last. It's only a self tapper, so be careful with it. There we go, that's that one in. Right, another one that goes much further forward, even harder to get to. All sorts of bits in the way up here. Bits of metal and stuff. Right, I'm going to have to have a good look in there first. Yeah, that's pig awkward. Right. Yeah, you have to do it by eye, I'm afraid. Those these things are just so awkward. You know, a lot easier with the wheel liner out, but the wheel liner's not that easy to get out either. Right, all aligned, yep. Yeah. There we go. That's that done. Let's move on to the brake ducts. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit all these top fittings. Now where they came out, they quite often leave rust marks and that's quite handy because that shows you exactly where they should be. So that shows exactly where they came from. See any problems? No, nope, that all looks fine. There's a T20, it goes up the top here. Glad to see everything's lining up. Be a bit of a shame if it wasn't. There we go, he's in. Put that cover back on. Right, same again, bottom in first, push the top in, pull it across, easy. Right, one left, which is by the fog light. Yeah, that's lining up as well. There we go, and then we'll put the fog light cover that side, excuse me. That's that in. Right, that just leaves the wheel arch. Right, so now it's just a case of putting the wheel arch fittings back in. Hopefully I've got the right number of screws left. Yep, we're doing well here today. Got the right number of screws and everything. Right, first of all, the 10 mil one goes in, which is this one here. So he's got to go up at this point here. So get... Right, just the bottom fittings to go in now. One going here. Put them in a bit. They're all eight mils. Got him in. Got him in. One more. Right, eight mil. No extension on that one. Yeah, no extension at all by the look of it. Uh, 
and short extension for these ones. There we go then, job all done. Yeah, it was a bit of a palaver in places, I must admit. But I think now I've done it once, I'd be able to do it all in, well, probably about an hour, I should think. The fiddly things were the two eight mil self-tapping bolts that join the bumper to the wing. They were all good to get to. It would have been easier if I'd removed the whole wheel liner. But having removed the wheel liner in the past, it's not a trivial thing to do. It really doesn't want to come out. So I was quite happy just to sort of put my arm behind the wheel liner and get to those two eight mils. And the other one which was awkward was the lower inner bolt, um, well, Torx fitting on the headlight unit itself, just because it's awkward to get to. It would have been a lot easier if I'd used a quarter inch socket set rather than using a half inch, but I didn't have enough extensions on the quarter inch. So uh, yeah, half inch it was, and that took up quite a lot of space. So yeah, if you can use a quarter inch socket set for that, with the Torx bit, uh, T25. And that, that's really about the awkward parts. The rest of it's quite easy. Now, would it have been easier if I just removed the whole bumper? Well, not for me working on my own, it wouldn't, um, because it's quite a large thing. And I'm not sure I've been able to sort of carry it myself. And what do you do with it afterwards? Unless you disconnect the high pressure hoses, and a few other bits and bobs, then it's still going to be connected. And uh, yeah, the only thing I could do in that situation is just sort of plonk it down in front of the car and being a, being a bit of a klutz, I probably would have trodden on it. Um, so yeah, I was quite happy just to remove it that far and work on it. That worked out really well. There's enough space, even if I'd removed the bumper completely, there's still very little space to get to that lower torx bit on the headlamp assembly because there's two a couple of other lumps of metal in front of it probably parts of the radio i really can't remember so yeah i was happy just to take off half the bumper and have that bit hanging out at least i wasn't going to tread on it and so on so yeah i think this, if i have to do it again on the other side then i'll probably give myself an hour to do it and that will probably do nicely. Um, I think what I'll do after this video ends is add on the xenon bulb and the igniter replacement routine so they're all in one place. Um, because those three things, the bulb itself, the igniter and the control unit, that will be probably about 95% of all xenon light failures will be covered by all of those. Um, yeah, what caused that control unit to fail? I found out at the end, it was full of water. Yep, yeah, I've gone through a bit of a flood. I went very slowly, but unfortunately, a Range Rover coming the other way decided to flash through it, caused a huge, great big wake. I slowed right down to a crawl because I didn't want to slurp in any water into the engine. But it, the water obviously f uh, splashed up and got that control unit. I thought it would be waterproof, but it isn't. There's quite a gap on it. There's no ceiling between the control unit and the headlamp itself. Also notice that the headlight itself was quite damp, and so I had to use my uh, headlight cleaning or headlight defogging routine to clean it out. And I kept the hairdryer on it for about an hour until it was all dry. Thank you very much for commenting. I really do love reading the comments and I always try and to answer them as soon as quick as I can. Thanks to my usual subscribers. I love getting comments from you and I, I know you all by name now, so that's great. Yeah, I always love hearing from you. If you liked the video and it was useful, put a thumbs up, that'd be great. That helps the channel. And always, if you can, watch the video to the end. That helps my analytics. So thanks very much and I'll see you next time.